Hey guys, welcome back to Dirty Dave's Garage. We're down here with my son's car, the 2008 Scion XB. He's getting a OBD code, P0420. Hopefully you can see that. We did the scan on it. He had it cleared once at AutoZone, came back, and they were saying it might be the catalytic converter, but it could also be the O2 sensor, which is probably more likely. The car's got about 170K on it. So I had him go ahead and get a O2 sensor. We're gonna pop that in uh, and see if that fixes it before we go spending money on a catalytic converter. And just so you know, this code points to the upstream, which would be this one. Can you bring that light around, bud? Grab that light. It's up front here. I'm gonna have light in a second here. But, uh, you see it connects right here. We're gonna pull that out of the connector and it's right down here under the exhaust manifold. You can see where it's going in the side there. That's the one we wanna try and replace. So we'll probably have to take this exhaust shield off. Looks like three, four bolts and uh, get that out of the way. Car's hot, so I'm not gonna film me doing this. I'm gonna put some gloves on and get this shroud out of the way and then we'll work at getting the old O2 sensor out and plugging the new one in, and we'll be back. Okay, so we got the shroud out of the way. It was four 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, be careful taking them off, don't round them off. They might be a little stiff. Just tap them, put a wrench on it, 12 mil wrench, tap it with a hammer to break them loose, and then crank them out. Now we can see where our O2 sensor is going in. Looks like it's got a little clip around it. So we're going to have to get back there with a wrench somehow. Let me figure that out and I'll show you. Once we do that, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and unhook this. Figure out how this uh, connector comes off. Looks like you might have to stick a screwdriver in behind it. None of those deals. Just checking it. Yeah, right in here. We'll have to slide a screwdriver in and then it should pull out. So we'll get that loose and then we'll see about getting that uh, o2 sensor out i'm going to put a little croil on it just um, penetrating oil you know this stuff works pretty good uh i tell everybody to use this stuff it's the best thing i've found for loosening up bolts and we'll just put a squirt on there let it start soaking in <clears throat> let that sit while we figure out what size uh I have a, one of those um, O2 sensor wrenches you can put over it that goes over the cable. Never really had much luck with them. I always have better luck with an open end wrench, but there's not a lot of room in there unless I can get one in behind it and pull up on it to break it loose. Hopefully they didn't put it in with Hercules strength at the factory. But like I said, I'm going to slide a screwdriver in here. Right, I can grab one real quick. We'll see if that works. Do this one-handed. Actually, hold the camera for me, bud. Let's see if that gets it loose. It might be a smaller screwdriver. This one's pretty big. I don't think it's going in far enough. Yep, I'm gonna need a smaller screwdriver. All right, so we got it out. I don't know if you can see in here. I'm gonna try and show you, but on that connector, you're gonna need a skinny screwdriver. And there's a little tab here. You got to get this under the tab and lift it away a little bit like that because on the sensor, there's some a little nub. I'm going to move it away from the light so you can see that nub and it catches on that. So you're lifting that tab up off of that nub and then this just slides out of that housing. So we got that end out. Now there, there's a, they've got a little clamp around this holding this cable in place. We're going to try to figure out how to get this off so we can put it back up there. But if not, I'll just zip tie it. In fact, I may just cut this and zip tie the new one in to keep, you know, I'm sure Toyota did that to keep the cord from dangling and to keep things neat. But it uh, looks like I can put pliers on this or something and get this unhooked. So I'm going to see if I can figure that out and just reuse it. If not, I'll just zip tie the new one on there. And we'll be back. Okay, so quick update. I just squeeze these little ears 
on that connector and it popped open so we will be able to reuse it just squeeze these two ears together let me slide it off maybe you can get a better view of it away from my floodlight down here but uh you can see those little ears sticking out i just put grabbed them with some pliers and it opened right up and popped open whoop and i lost it. <laughs> so that's how you get that off now uh now we're going to figure out how to get the uh, o2 sensor out and we'll be back to show you Okay, so the little wire holder down here, I pulled the wire, the cable out of it, and it just spins on. It looks like it's just kind of like clamped around, like spring-loaded. Yep, it just pops off. So now we're ready to get the O2 sensor out. We've got our little spring clamp out. We'll pop that back on when we put everything back together to hold the wire away from the heat. And once I figure out how we're going to get this off, I'll be back. All right, so we got the new O2 sensor in. We use this tool. One of these O2 sensor removers, I think this is the first time in my life one of these has ever worked. Every time I have to do an O2 sensor, those things are in so damn tight, I end up having to use a pipe wrench or something to break them loose or get really creative, cut the wire and put a big air socket on it and huge breaker bar. But um, Toyota actually put them in like a normal human being and it popped right off uh, didn't take much effort I put a little extension on a breaker bar and it popped right off so I unscrewed it twisted the cable while I unscrewed it put the new one in the new one came with aniseed sorry I didn't film this I was just so shocked it came loose but you have to remove this little plastic cap from the, the uh, new one because it'll be covering up on the threads this is I'll show you on the old one the threads here We'll have anises on them, and this is covered up so it doesn't smear all over the place. And try to keep the actual O2 sensor part, which is this, clear of the, don't get any crap on it. But that's in, we tighten it up, we're going to plug it back in, and then we're going to put our clamps on. I'm going to run it under this radiator hose like it was before. And then we'll run the car, see if the light goes out. I could reset it, but I'm not going to do that because I want to see if the car resets itself. We're just plugging this back in, and it, I heard it pop, so it connected. So we'll we'll put that clamp back on here that we that plastic clamp with the ears, and then we'll put the spring clamp back on around around the O2 sensor up from the bottom. We'll pop it on there, and uh, then we'll be able to secure our wire to that, just like that. We'll pull our wire, stick that back in, maybe, it's really hard to do this with one hand, there it goes, and we'll put our little plastic ring on, and that's it, we're done, hopefully this is going to fix his problem, I'll put an update after he dries it for a few days, and let everybody know if uh, it cured it or not, because next step I believe is the catalytic converter, and they're expensive, so it's I'll put a link to an O2 sensor in my uh, description. Uh, you know, you don't want to spend a fortune on one. Yeah, the OEM ones are better, but you probably pay 200 bucks for it. I think we paid 35, around 40 35, bucks. 40 bucks for this one. Yeah. Hey, if we get 60K out of it, I'll be happy, you know. And if we don't have to buy a new catalytic converter, I know my son will be really happy. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more episodes. Make sure to like and subscribe on Dirty Dave's Garage, and we'll see you next time.